वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर इज एसेसरी नर्व द एसेसरी नर्व इज अ प्योरली मोटर नर्व एंड इट्स न्यूक्लियस बिलोंग्स टू दी स्पेशल विसरल ई फ्रेंड कॉलम The accessory nerve consists of a cranial part which arises from the medulla oblongata and is accessory to the vagus nerve and a spinal part which arises from the upper five cervical spinal segments. Now let us learn more about it. Suppose this is the lateral view of the brain stem and the upper part of the spinal cord. This is the pons. This is the medulla. then this is the cervical part of the spinal cord this is the first cervical segment this is the second cervical segment this is the third cervical segment this is the fourth cervical segment and this is the fifth cervical segment this is the olive anterior to it is the anterolateral sulcus and posterior to it is the posterolateral sulcus this is the posterolateral sulcus now we have taken a cross section of the open part of the medulla this is the fourth ventricle and this is the floor of the fourth ventricle in the floor of the fourth ventricle lies a nucleus which is known as nucleus ambiguus it is known as nucleus ambiguus okay from this nucleus arises the cranial part of the accessory nerve from here arises the cranial part of accessory nerve it comes out from the posterolateral sulcus of the medulla so this is the posterolateral sulcus of the medulla this is the anterolateral and this was the olive so it comes out from the posterolateral sulcus of the medulla this nucleus ambiguus also give rise to 9th that is glossopharyngeal and 10th that is the vagus nerve also so if we draw a longitudinal section of the nucleus ambiguus the upper part of nucleus ambiguus give rise to the 9th cranial nerve the middle part give rise to the 10th cranial nerve and the lower part give rise to the accessory nerve or the 11th cranial nerve so the accessory nerve was coming out from the lower part of the nucleus ambiguus the cranial part of the accessory nerve comes out from the posterolateral sulcus in the form of four to five rootlets which join together to form the cranial part of the accessory nerve so this is the cranial part of the accessory nerve from above it arises the 10th cranial nerve this was the 10th cranial nerve and this was the 11th cranial nerve upper part of the posterolateral sulcus give rise to another nerve cranial nerve that is the 9th cranial nerve now the spinal part of the accessory nerve the spinal part of the accessory nerve arises from a nucleus which is known as spinal nucleus spinal nucleus which lies in the lateral part of the anterior horn in the upper five cervical segments so this is the spinal nucleus this was the spinal nucleus so from here the spinal part of accessory nerve arises and comes out from the lateral part of the spinal cord that is between the ventral root and the dorsal root so therefore the spinal part lies between the ventral root and the dorsal root okay here it also lies posterior to a ligament which arises from the arachnoid matter of the spinal cord 
दैट इज द डेंटिकुलेट लिगामेंट और द लिगामेंटम डेंटिकुलेट सो द स्पाइनल पार्ट इज पोस्टीरियर टू द डेंटिकुलेट लिगामेंट सो इफ आई ड्रॉ इन दिस सेक्शन दिस वॉज द डॉर्सल रूट दिस वॉज द वेंटल रूट ऑफ द फर्स्ट सर्वाइकल द सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ एंड द फिफ्थ From each segment arises a filament of the spinal part. These are the filaments, and these filaments ascend together and join together to form the spinal part of the S cylinder. This spinal part of S cylinder enters the posterior cranial fossa through a foramen known as the foramen magnum. This is the foramen magnum. and enters into the posterior cranial fossa here it lies posterior to a artery that is the fourth part of the vertebral artery it lies posterior to the fourth part of the vertebral artery at the level of the foramen magnum now the spinal part joins with the cranial part of the accessory nerve after joining they pass through the foramen known as the jugular foramen this is the jugular foramen in the jugular foramen they lie in the intermediate compartment also in the intermediate compartment passes the 10th cranial nerve and also the 9th cranial nerve also so these three nerves 9 10 11 cranial nerve passes to the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen to come out from the posterior cranial fossa into the base of the skull here all the three cranial nerves 9 10th and 11th cranial nerves lie between two structures that is this is the internal carotid artery medially and laterally the internal jugular vein So here the cranial nerves lie between the internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. When the 11th cranial nerve comes out from the jugular foramen, it again divide into the spinal part and the cranial part. This was the cranial part and this was the spinal part. The cranial part joins with the 10th cranial nerve that is the vagus and continues with it. Now let us see what are the structures supplied by the cranial part of the accessory nerve. The cranial part of the accessory nerve travels with the vagus nerve. Travels with the vagus nerve and gives three branches along with the vagus nerve. The first branch is the pharyngeal branch. through which fibers of the cranial part of accessory nerve also travels this pharyngeal branch also receive fibers from the glossopharyngeal nerve this was the 9th cranial nerve this was the 11th cranial nerve and this was the 10th cranial nerve pharyngeal branch these three nerves together forms a plexus which is known as the pharyngeal plexus pharyngeal plexus and this pharyngeal plexus lies superficial to the constrictors of pharynx this pharyngeal plexus supplies very two important viscera of the neck that is first is the soft palate it supply all the muscles of the soft palate except tensor villi palatini which is supplied by the mandibular nerve because it is derived from the first pharyngeal arch this pharyngeal plexus also supplies the muscles of the pharynx all the muscles of the pharynx except stylo pharyngeus muscle stylo pharyngeus muscle which is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve as this muscle is derived from the third pharyngeal arch the vagus along with the ranking nerve also gives a third branch that is the laryngeal branch which is known as recurrent 
laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve with this nerve also traverses the fibers of the 11th cranial nerve and supplies the muscles of the larynx they supply muscles of the larynx all muscles of the larynx except a muscle which is known as cricothyroid muscle which is supplied by external laryngeal nerve this vagus nerve again give a third branch which is known as the cardiac branch cardiac branch through which also fibers of the 11th cranial nerve also travels and supply the heart so here we can see that the cranial part of the accessory nerve is supplying the soft palate the pharynx the larynx and the heart through the branches of the vagus nerve now the spinal part of the accessory nerve the spinal part of the accessory nerve passes laterally crosses the internal jugular vein superficially then it crosses the tip of the transverse process of the atlas vertebra this was the tip of the transverse process of the atlas vertebra this is the external acoustic meatus when it crosses the tip of the transverse process of the atlas vertebra here the nerve is also crossed superficially by an artery which is the occipital artery here it is crossed by an artery it is the occipital artery and it is accompanied by a branch of this occipital artery that is the upper sternomastoid branch of the occipital artery so this was the occipital artery okay now the spinal part passes more backwards and laterally passes deep to a process which is known as the styloid process that is the styloid process and a muscle which is known as the stylohyoid muscle so it passes deep to the styloid process and a muscle that is the stylohyoid muscle then it passes more downwards and passes deep to another muscle that is the posterior belly of digastric passes deep to a muscle that is posterior belly of digastric and appears in the upper angle of a triangle which is known as the carotid triangle this is the carotid triangle so it appears at the apex of the or the upper angle of the carotid triangle here it enters into the anterior border of a muscle which is known as the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the junction of the upper 1/4 upper 1/4 and lower 3/4 lower 3/4 here this nerve passes deep to this muscle and supplies it at this level two nerves two cervical nerves also communicate with the spinal nerve that is the branches of the c2 second cervical and the third cervical which give proprioceptive fibers to the sternocleidomastoid muscle after supplying this muscle that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle it passes downwards and emerges from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at its middle which is known as the nerve point this point is known as nerve point here at the nerve point the spinal accessory nerve is related to four cutaneous nerve that is the lesser occipital nerve which hooks around the spinal part of the accessory nerve another branch that is the greater auricular nerve and a transverse cervical nerve and another branch that is the supraclavicular nerve which divides into three branches so at the nerve point it is related to four cutaneous cervical nerves lesser occipital nerve great auricular nerve 
transverse cervical nerve and the supraclavicular nerves. Now, after emerging from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, it enters into a triangle which is formed by the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle, middle one third of the clavicle, and another muscle backwards that is the trapezius muscle. Trapezius muscle. This triangle is known as the posterior triangle. Posterior triangle. Here in this posterior triangle, this nerve that is the 11th canal nerve passes downwards and laterally, passes downwards and laterally over a muscle that is known as the levator scapuli muscle. This muscle is known as levator scapuli. Okay, this spinal part of the SSC nerve runs along the facial roof of this posterior triangle. That is, it is related superficially to the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and is separated from the muscles of the floor of the posterior triangle by the pre-vertebral layer of deep cervical fascia. Here in the posterior triangle, it is also related to some lymph nodes which are known as superficial cervical lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are known as superficial cervical lymph nodes. This downward course of the spinal accessory nerve divides the posterior triangle into two zones or areas. The part above the nerve is, no, is known as a carefree area and the area below this nerve is a careful area because in the careful area lies the brachial plexus, subclavian artery and the subclavian veins and other blood vessels. Therefore, this area is very careful area and in the upper part no important structures lie. Therefore, it is a carefree area. Now, after traversing through the posterior triangle, it enters the trapezius muscle just 5 cm above the clavicle and supplies this muscle, that is the trapezius muscle. Before supplying, it communicates with two cervical branches, two cervical nerves, that is the C3, third cervical and the fourth cervical which takes the proprioceptive sensations from the trapezius muscle. So, we can see that the spinal part of the SSC nerve is supplying two muscles, sternocleidomastoid muscle and another trapezius muscle. This nerve can get injured at two levels. First, the most common location of injury is the nerve point where the SSC nerve emerges from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Here, these lymph nodes, the superficial cervical lymph node can get inflamed and can compress this spinal part of the SSC nerve. So, when this nerve get injured at this level, the muscle that get paralyzed is the trapezius muscle which leads to drooping of the shoulders and the patient is unable to shrug his shoulders against resistance. The another location in which this nerve can get injured is when it enters into the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle or at the upper angle of the carotid triangle. So when it gets injured at this level, both the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscle gets paralyzed. So it will lead to drooping of the shoulders and loss of shrugging of shoulders as well as loss of the action of the sternocleidomastoid muscle that is chin towards the opposite side and head towards the same side. So that's all about the SSA nerve. Thank you.